Okay. So let's just do a little review and then we're going to go into all of the things, you guys, all of the things. So, so many of you have been in my world. I see all your familiar faces and we're already doing all the stuff for, for a minute, but let me just review with you the central understanding of how we manifest the shit out of our life. Let's just review the way that this gorgeous, incredible universe is made. Let's just understand it, right? Because knowledge is power, right? And it's not enough. It's not enough to believe. We got to know it. We got to know, right? And what is a belief anyway? A belief is a thought that you've thought so many times until you just believe it. And now you don't believe it. You just know. You just know that person's, that's my girl. I just know that. It's not even a belief. It's just, that's what I know, right? Because you've had that as a consistent pattern of thought. So let's just review the way that I first turned on all the Christmas lights, the way that I first became so activated in my understanding of how to manipulate in the most beautiful way, this gorgeous world so that I could come to create, so that I could come to be on this beautiful earth and, and show and, and show up as I'm supposed to be. The way that I first understood that was walking in the old city of Jerusalem, living there for a few years and just soaking in that wisdom. And as we all know, so many of these wisdom traditions, they lead, those rivers lead to the exact same ocean, right? And my teacher, my, my greatest teacher, Rabbi David Aaron, was once on Larry King with Deepak Chopra and Marianne Williamson. It was the three of them on the show. It was such an amazing episode because they all finished each other's sentences. They all said the same thing. Okay. So that's really exciting because <laughs> it means that you can go over here and read it over here. Or you can read it over here, but it's going to lead you home. It's going to lead you home. And so what is it that I learned that changed my life? It was the con control alt delete on the original program that I had running. And I set a new software in that, in that mind of mine that helped me understand how to really understand what I was looking at, how to see reality as it is. And that is the understanding that you were made, right? Just like a Tesla is built to run the way it runs, right? And you plug it in. That's how it works, right? Don't go try to find a gas station for a Tesla. It doesn't run on gas, right? It doesn't run that way. So you understand it, and then you actually can get it to work for you because you know what it runs on. You, just like a, a Tesla is built the way it's built, you were built as the ultimate receiver. You are a receiver. You are built that way. So what does that mean? A receiver, just like any other receiver, if you put a radio in this room, right? And we need this reminder because we forget. We forget all the time. We think that the world's happening to us. We don't realize that we as the receiver are dictating what music comes in. We don't remember that. We don't remember that. We don't understand that a coherent signal, that our energy, right, is projected into this field of atomic, atomicness. It's all atoms. It's all energy. That's all everything is, right? So what does it mean that you are a receiver? It means that you get to tune yourself to whatever station. And depending on where you are tuned, that's what you will broadcast. So if you are tuned to abundance, all that's going to be coming in for you is look how lucky this is. Look how net positive this universe is. Look how many amazing humans are in my life. I can't wait for the next new person I'm going to meet. I love how people are so supportive. I love that there's clues everywhere. I'm so grateful for this breath. I'm so grateful for my feet. I'm so grateful for everything. I just feel it. And who, who is that person? That person is a magnet. That person is just grace. That person blesses everyone around them, right? That person is, is giving life to everything in its path. It's like watching Dorothy move from black and white into color and everything starts to just start to, to move into color. People like that, they just turn everybody on. They just move everybody out of their low mood into something that's a high vibration, right? Depending on where your receiver is, that is what you broadcast. Meaning to say that everything that you are witnessing all the time you are only witnessing it because you are the movie projector. You are the projector. You are projecting a movie onto your life and you are deciding what kind of movie it is. You're casting it. You're like, you see that person? The person's a liar. 
somebody else looks at that same person you said that this and they say that person's a gift that person even the darkness that person brings that's a reason for me to have empathy i love that person or you know what that's contrast you know what that contrast did that showed me who i was i'm so grateful for that in my life right you are the movie projector you are the director you are the caster you are the writer you 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 all the time all the time all the time and then what happens is since all potentials exist in this atomic field at all times you're only able to see through the eyes of what you project so everything all of a sudden when you start to get in the zone you go out of the blue you won't believe it, Kath, out of the blue, I met the coolest woman at this dinner and she referred me to this amazing job or out of the blue, you won't believe I got this idea. And then you know what happened the second after I had this idea, I got a text from so-and-so and because I got that, yeah, you know what's happening there? It was all there all the time. It was hidden in plain sight, but you couldn't see it because you didn't have your glasses on. You had a different kind of glasses. We Actually, I took a screenshot of it the other day just to give you like the exact number, but it's something about how much information our eyes actually perceive. And it was like, how many bits of information? Here it is. The human brain can process 11 million bits of information every second, 11 million bits of information, but the conscious mind only gets 40 pieces of information. Okay, so what's happening? right? And let's be, let's be real. We have a unconscious mind and a conscious mind and who wins out of those two. What do we know from everything that we've learned about the brain? The subconscious mind wins unless you're dealing with higher consciousness, then you win every time. Right. But when people are like, I'm going to just go up against my subconscious and tell myself nice things. It's like, you're going down, you're going down red night. Um, but when you come from a super conscious place, right? Then you're not in the mind at all because there's really very few answers in the mind. But here and here, when this is a coherent, when this is a signal, when you are in a meditation state, when you are looking out over the Grand Canyon and you're looking at a baby's face, you go to super consciousness. And all of a sudden you can't even hold a negative thought there. All you hold there is what? There's only one thing that's present in the super conscious field, love. It's like when somebody you didn't have the best relationship passes away and then all that's left is love and wisdom. That's it. That's all that's left. Because no matter what it was, what's left in you, right? Something that feels like love, right? So when we understand this, this is the skeleton key to your whole life. So it's about what glasses are you looking through every single day? And are you connected? to what you really are, because we never, ever, 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 ever get what we want, but we always get what we are because everything's an echo. Everything is always an echo. Everything is a hologram. Everything that you receive is an echo. Why? Because the only thing you're receiving is your perception. The only thing that's happening for you moment by moment is your perception of reality. So somebody else can have a completely different experience because they perceive it completely differently. Last night, my 11 year old is freaking out because she forgot her homework. She left it in her locker and we had an open house and she gets so mad that she didn't tell us to go to her locker. And now she was like, I should have told you and I thought you were gonna be till nine. I didn't realize you were leaving at eight and I didn't. And now she's all worked up and I'm, she's all worked up and she's all worked up. And I'm looking at her thinking, she's got the cutest little like Sephora kit on her desk with this like perfect little like makeup light mirror. She's got like a little collection of her Air Jordans in all different colors. She's got three great friends this year and she's like losing her mind. I was like, listen, I was like, your teacher knows you were with, I was at open house. Things happen sometimes. You're going to be okay. I'm not going to be okay. This is going to be devastating. I'll never get into middle school because the applications are due. And then this is going to be reflected. And I was like, wow, let's zoom out. Let's zoom out. And she was just like in this moment. Right. And my fifth grader was like, it's fine. <laughs> She was like, the teachers are nice. The teachers understand it, right? And so they were having a, a fully different experience of reality based on their beliefs, based on their perception. One of them went to bed crying. 
it's fascinating. I kept saying, this is fascinating to me because I was the kid who was like, forget homework. Like, and she's like, I have to do it. It's like, I don't know where it comes from. I don't have it. I think it comes from my husband, but um, he stayed up with her and then he tried to find the book online and he printed some pages of this book. He was able to find it. I guess a lot of books are online. And then he was able to help her get the homework questions done, but she would not go to sleep until they came up with a solution. And my other one was like asleep for an hour. Like, it's fine. You know, like just chill, baby. Like she's like, and sh who's going to have, who's going to have a better experience anyway. Right. It doesn't matter what middle school they get into. None of that matters. I always say that it matters that you're enjoying your life. Right. So your perception is actually the only thing you take to the bank. Right. What you really want is the feeling of well being. Right. And here's what's so crazy. We're so married to our analytical mind and we believe it. Oh, do we believe it? Like when someone tells you something juicy, that's a limiting belief, it gets really satisfying to hold on to it. Cause why your brain is built to solve problems. And so while you're busy, like chewing on really difficult beliefs, your brain's stimulated by it. Your brain's like, Oh, a big problem. Lots of sticky stuff for me to look at constantly. What's a, a, a little bit of a missed opportunity is that if you actually gave it a real problem to solve, like I'm doing this. So where can I find the clue that's gonna lead me to the next big frontier, my next most mystical, biggest moment of my life, your brain would actually help you with that, right? You can, you can make it work for you, but instead you're using it all the time, just like spinning bandwidth on like, it'll never happen. Nothing's out there. It's all a lie. And meanwhile, I'm here to tell you that the life that I've lived is living proof that everything I just said is what it is. It is what it is. And the 800 people that I've interviewed on my show are all living proof of it too. So I've got tons of evidence to say, this is how it works, right? This is how it works. When your receiver is tuned to things never work out for me, let me tell you how negative and awful the world is. Let me show you how selfish people are. Ooh, you're going to find it. And it's going to feel bad and people are going to feel it from you. Right. And then you're going to be living inside of a really yucky movie that you cast where everybody is superficial and shallow and self-involved and it's not going to be fun. And then you're going to make all the meaning out of C. I told you they're like that. And because people will feel that coming off of you, they will be a version of themselves. That's not the most lovely version of themselves because they're also playing off of that. Right. So when you have your receiver tuned to all men are scum, then good luck, right? When you have your receiver tuned to there's no money anywhere and work is all about working super hard. And even if I worked super hard, I wouldn't want money anyway, because when people who have money are super greedy and disgusting, now you're SOL, right? Because you've got a double bind. So let's go a little further now, since we just understood a little bit about how things work, that we are a projector of energy right? And that we are the keeper of the keys because we are constantly perceiving reality, which means we're deciding what we're, what we're witnessing, right? I came home from a meditation retreat uh, two weeks ago. I was away for six days, meditating for six days. When I came home, because it was kind of like I pulled that old mind, whatever is in the old program, you can just pull it right out of the body because it gets stuck in your cells. Honestly, it becomes something that your body just gets familiar with and it it's there to try to protect you. So it closes your heart a little bit in different ways. But when you meditate for six days or even six hours or even six minutes, you start to pull some of that old garbage out of the mind, which pulls it out of the cells, which pulls it, pulls it out of this familiar, predictable pattern. And when I came home from those six days, I looked right at my husband and my kids and the sky and the trees and my little Persian kitten. And I was like, this is the jackpot of all jackpots. Like each one of you is literally like, it's like, it's like, it's like God gave me like a little creature, like from like the holiest, highest, like most delicious stardust. And I just get to like orbit around you and receive from you. And I'm just so in love with you. And I'm so grateful. And you know what happened, you guys, when I was on those six days of meditation, and by the way, we have now seen in the science that when you meditate, it increases your serotonin level. Okay. 
you know what psilocybin does? Psilocybin increases your serotonin, which means you've expanded awareness, which is why if people take psilocybin, which I've never done that, but I, I'm, I'm definitely curious about it. It increases serotonin. What does serotonin do? It calms down the amygdala, the part of your brain that's always in fight or flight, that's given you that bad movie. And it opens you up to the real movie because it expands consciousness. Isn't that amazing? That's what it does. That's what more serotonin does. That's what meditation does. So it's very literal, helping you to just see things as they are. And when I came home, I saw everything as it actually is. Every tree, every flower, I was so sensitized to it because for six days I was meditating for eight hours a day, which means you're tripping, right? Because you've increased your serotonin level by 200%. So I was in that. And while I was in my meditation journey for six days, and this is not drug assisted, this is just meditation. I saw, right, all of these beautiful things in, in reality as it is. I could feel the love because love is beyond space and time. It's not local. So I can feel my husband with me even when I'm there. I can feel my grandmother in the next world with me because, again, love is faster than the speed of light, right? It's beyond time. It's in the now. It's super consciousness, right? And most of the universe actually is faster than the speed of light. It's just, it's so fast that there's no time. Time evaporates. It's right now. That's how quickly you create when you come from consciousness. That's why you can become a magician when you are super conscious and coherent. You can be like Elsa, just turning thoughts into things because when you are beyond space and time, when you are fully coherent, when you are Bob Marley and your heart is open that much, you just imprint, 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 imprint into the field. That's how we create. That's how Walt Disney sold his vision to all of those people, it was just like one conversation after another with this coherence, with this conviction, with this passion. It's like, you just move out of the way. You're just like, represent, like go, like just do it, right? Like he saw it. He saw it looking at acres of swampland in Anaheim. And he's like, do you see it? Look with these glasses, cause it's a world. That's Jim Henson, right? That's Jim Henson who knew that 45 years after, you know, he started this idea called Sesame Street. Kids are obsessed with Elmo. He could see that. He could see that when every single TV station was like, no one wants this. This is weird. He's like, look again, look with these glasses, right? And it was the UK that actually put the Muppet Show on the air first because every single network in the USA said, no adult is ever watching a Muppet in primetime. And he was like, you're going to be sorry you said that. <laughs> and he came back and the rest is history, right? But what is that? That's the magic of a coherent energetic, right? That's it. You come from that place. You're Fred Astaire. You do your thing. The whole room stops. The whole room stops. That's energy. You have that amount of energy in you. You just haven't tapped it. So you're like, basically, you would be akin most of the days to getting in a Tesla but you don't have a charge. So you just sit down and it doesn't leave the driveway. And you're like, damn, this was a waste of money, right? But it has the ability to take you where you want to go. You just don't know how to use it. So we need to look at, we need to look at what is the movie that you're currently writing, right? What is the, what is the movie you're directing currently? Who have you casted in this movie? What does the world look like? And all of that's based on what? What did I just say? All of that is based on what? What you perceive, what you're experiencing, what you are imprinting is based on your projector, right? Which is based on your belief system because it's only what? The only free will that you actually really have is what you choose to think. That's it. That is where your humanity starts and ends. That's it. Let me say that again. That is every single wise person who's ever come before me, right? What are you focused on? Where's your attention? Do you even have your attention? Is your attention all, are you just asleep at the wheel? Which most people are, your subconscious runs a program, right? Because your life is the result of what you think over and over. A thought that you repeat becomes a belief. That belief becomes the action that you take and your life is a result of that. That's it. There's nothing else happening every second, all day long. So your greatest choice is where is my 
thought? Where's my belief? Where's my focus in this moment? So what we have to do is we have to be like the best software coders possible and we have to recode the program. And then once we recode it, we take action, right? So once we understand and once we can see clearly, then we can move. It's kind of like trying to drive in a blizzard, right? It's very difficult because you can't see five feet in front of you. So it's hard to move because you can't see. So most of the time you are literally flooded with this thick, this thick coat of beliefs that keep you in prison to this limiting, disgusting, difficult, scarcity-minded blueprint of reality. So then you can't really take action because there's nowhere to go, right? Have you ever played any one of those games? I, I just, I don't know why I think of this one, but like there's a game on the table at the Cracker Barrel where you can like jump over the pegs, right? And then eventually you get to a place where there's no other move to make. There's, you're out of moves, right? Or maybe somebody comes along like, you can move this way. And you're like, you're a jerk. No, I'm just kidding. But you run out of moves, right? Most of the time, the people that I talk to, the people that I meet who are super well-meaning have this thick coat, right? It's like this thick coat on the lens. They can't see at all. And then they say, I don't know what action to take. None, none of the action is working. And you see, and then that just reinforces the evidence that your beliefs are true and then you just don't do anything and then you can't see and that's your life and that sucks right but we live in the same world as far as i know it's 131 on the pacific coast and we're all here in the same time right we're in the same time <laughs> right now whatever now is for you we're in the same now and my reality is mine right so once we can see clear then we know how to move right? And then we can master what moves to make because we can anticipate because we can see even further, right? So let's talk for a second about abundance in your mind as it is right now. What is the belief you hold around money? So when you take a second, take a, a, a pen and paper, and I just want you to be brutally brutally, I mean, like do the work, like get it out, like cough it up, like let's go, like let's get rid of it. We don't need this garbage in our life. I want you to journal for just a couple minutes. What are all the things that are in your, your, your mind around money? Like all of them. And some of them might be beautiful and that's fine too, right? I don't want you to like, you know, try to play gotcha with yourself. I just want to have a radical understanding of what we're dealing with. Because once you have the awareness, it's like a soap bubble. You touch it, it'll disappear. It'll start to move, but we've got to get radically honest so we can be aware of it. And then we won't trip over it because we know it's there. So show me and show yourself when you think about making money, what comes up for you? When you think about money in general, what comes up for you? Money is what? People with money are what? That's where I want you to start. Money is what? People with money are what? If you had money, what would that mean? What are all the meanings that you've made that you're perceiving around abundance? Work on that for a second, please. And I'll put on some background music for you. Take a couple minutes. People with money are what? I want to hear all the things that come up until I tell you to put your pens down. Money is what? And if you had money, what would that mean?
30 more seconds. to take a moment and on your paper just for you for a second I want you to think about what amount would you love to have show up in your life what amount of money would you love in the next year like this time next year you look at your bank account and how much money is in your bank account think for a second don't judge it there's no wrong answer. You can write it on your paper and then if you're feeling brave, you can write it in the chat. Good. So I'm going to read some of these 300,000, 500,000, 280,000, a million, 500K, 250, 800,000, 10 million, 2 million, 150K, 8 million, 20 million, 3 million, 14 million. infinity okay so now I want you to do me a favor put your pen down close your eyes close your eyes let's take a deep breath and let's just find our center find the part of you that is bigger than your thoughts part of you that's bigger than your body the part of you that's not a body your conscious, your soul, who you really are, the essence of you, you before you were given a name, just the, the you that everybody knows, what you imprint when people are with you. It's not your clothes. It's not your physical form. It's your you. It's you. It's your goodness. It's your quirkiness, whatever that is. Find the part of you that is immaterial find the part of you that is connected to that which is, was, and will be. And just breathe into this place. And feel as you breathe into this place how your whole being begins to feel a little bit more relaxed and you can feel your heart just softer, more open. There's a part of you that's bigger than your story. There's a part of you that's connected to the creator of the universe. This is you, a masterpiece, a piece of the master. This is you, fully aligned with you and your energy. This vibrant pool of energy in a field of infinite energy and when you breathe into this place I want you to just feel how much of a capacity from this place do you have to give love from this place how much love could you give to the world from this place, 
how much empathy can you have for people you haven't even met? From this place, how much can you be in awe and wonder for the moon and the stars and people on the other side of the world? This part of you has an endless amount, a nonstop, infinite stream of love that pours through you that you can so generously give. It never turns off because it's who you are. You are a lightning rod for love, kindness, empathy, generosity, passion. You are a conductor of this gorgeousness. And in the same place where you give, where you have this capacity to give beyond the self from a place that's just this endless well, in that same place, how much love can you receive? From that same place, how many smiles could you receive? How much compassion could you receive? How much kindness and grace from that place could you hold? And the answer is, it's endless. You could receive six new beautiful friends every day. You could receive a smile from a baby you've never met until today. You could receive a hug from an 84-year-old woman. You could receive the magic of a rainbow. You could receive the beauty of listening to a symphony. You can receive and receive and receive and receive and receive because this part of you has the capacity to give an infinite amount and receive an infinite amount. The only amount that exists in this part of you, the part of you that really is your truth, is infinite. This is you connected to your being, your soul, the essence of you, the essential self. And this, this self, this being, this soul, by definition is abundant because it's infinite. Now open your eyes. So when you wrote down these numbers, what you're doing unconsciously is you are identifying who you are as an ego, a character, a story. And based upon your feeling of worth or lack of worth, and your feeling of the world from the place of ego, from the place of separation, from the place of constriction, you decide on a number from some algorithm, some equation. And the equation has to do with what you think you're worthy of, And when you actually get really present, you realize that all of that's ego. Because when you're really connected, it's infinite. The only number that matches the soul is infinite. No other number makes sense there. Any other number of anything measuring our capacity to receive anything 
puts us back in ego, in a character that we play, not in our being, not in our soul. The reason why every hospital that you ever will visit, God forbid, or for hopefully only good reasons like the birth of a baby, a healthy baby, but the reason why every hospital has 72 names on it is because Mother Teresa said it takes a checkbook to change the world. And when people give that kind of money, it's because they receive that kind of money. So when you look at all of the things that are underwritten all the time, it comes from a person who's receiving and giving and receiving and giving. You can be a person who has very little money and you can be extremely generous. And you can be a person who has a lot of money and not be generous. But if you're a person who has no money and you're generous and the thing you also want to give is money, you don't have it to give. That part of it, you can't give because you don't have it to give. But if you're a person who has money and you're generous, you can give your money. And you can keep receiving it and giving it, right? So of all the quadrants, having no money and being generous, having a lot of money and not being generous, right? Having no money and not being kind, having a lot of money and being kind, that one, that's, the, that's, that's probably the best one, right? Because then you're allowing for all the feels of all the abundance, you are a massive receiver, right? Now the Talmud discusses money in a very beautiful, interesting, helpful way. The Talmud, which is written thousands of years ago, says that money is like rain falling in a garden. And if money falls, or sorry, if rain, that's the metaphor. If rain falls on weeds, weeds grow. If rain falls on roses, roses grow. The Talmud says money is like an activator of what what is it creates more of what is that's it so that is why if we wanted to we could each take out a pen and paper which you you don't need to do this this is not the exercise but if i said i want you to think of 20 people in the whole world whether you know them or you don't know them you just heard of them 20 people who have a ton of money who are absolute jerks like terrible people you could do it and if i said i want you to Take out a pen and paper and make a list of 20 people who are really horrible people who have no money. You could do it. It's not the money. Nothing to do with the money. There's plenty of jails filled with both kinds, right? That's the truth. That's the hard truth, right? It's not the story we're being told, but that's it. That's some truth right there. And if I said, I want you to take out a list another list and I want you to make a list of 20 people who have no money, who are the kindest, most generous people. You could do it. Go watch Dan Butner talk about the blue zones. Go watch those folks. Pretty yummy folks. Not a lot of money in there. A lot of kindness, a lot of life, a lot of vitality. They're not interested in it. They don't got their ladder on the achievement wall. They're doing something different, right? And if I said, I want you to find people with a, a ton of money who are just oozing with integrity. You could do it. I promise you can do it. Of course you can do it, right? So it's not the money. It's your alignment. When you're in alignment with what we just talked about, you're connected to your goodness, your soul, your essential self, and you're given anything, what will you use it for? Good. How many people are given any kind of blessing? They have children, but they don't have integrity. What happens to those kids? Not a good place. People with integrity are given a child. What do they do with it? 
They make something beautiful. What about Wi-Fi? That's a tool. Some people have an unlimited Wi-Fi plan. I do, right? I use it for good. I talk to cool people. I create a podcast. I do things like this. What are some other people doing as we sit here? Really gross things. Pretty gross things. Lying to people, watching some horrible stuff, right? It's not the Wi-Fi. It's the choice. It's the integrity, right? When you are in alignment, you are connected to the force that is who you are. And you, as you really are, are completely abundant. And because of that, if you choose to walk in integrity, then the more you treat yourself, the more you're going to treat the world, right? That's the truth. That is not the way that in general, books and TV and society depicts things, right? We forget about the radical responsibility piece. So why do we do that? Because we assign all the responsibility to something outside of us. Oh, be careful with money. Look what it's going to do to you. It's not the money, right? There are so many people who have all kinds of things in their life. They have relationships, they screw them up, right? They have beautiful gifts in their life and they just waste it, right? And then there are people who have the same amount of gifts or less gifts and they just treat it totally differently, right? It has to do with the human being. It has to do with, again, what you think and believe, what you choose, right? Based upon the story you make up, based upon where you come from in your integrity. So that should free you to say, I am going to change the story, right? Because I would like to allow for the most amount of all blessing to flow through me. I don't want a certain amount of love in my life. I want an endless amount. I want to give an endless amount and I want to receive an endless amount. I want to take my, when I'm 120 years old, I want to take my last breath knowing that I played full out. I loved as many people as I could. I went to as many beautiful places as I could, right? I laughed as much as I could. I gave of myself, right? I gave so much of myself that I cared. I invested so much, right? Oh yeah, that's what you want, definitely. And that's with all things, right? Now, why is it that we get tripped up here around the money? Well, there's two places. There's two places. One place is this place, which is the belief around it because your subconscious will always win. Your subconscious is the CEO. So if your subconscious is telling you all the time that the truth of the matter is that money is really evil, then it'll sabotage your action all the time. For instance, in a similar vein, if you have a friend who says to you, I really want to get married, I really want to get married, but she's perpetually single, then what's probably at play is that subconsciously marriage equals, it's not safe, doesn't feel safe, right? Something about it is scary, right? Maybe there was a problem with a dad. Maybe there was a problem with a mom. Maybe her parents' marriage was a, a place of a lot of pain. Maybe somebody died unexpectedly when she was a kid. And so if you love something, you'll lose whatever the story is, right? So therefore she can tell herself, I've got the cutest new highlights. I have all the right clothes. I'm going on all the dates. And then it just doesn't go off the ground because we've all seen Goodwill hunting, right? And what does many drivers say? She goes, I don't want to take back. I just want you to come to California with me. And he's like, not you, Skylar, leave me alone. And it's like, what is that? He's afraid. He's going to go screw that thing up. Why? Because being close to somebody meant he was abused as a kid. We've all seen that movie, right? Well, on some level, we all play that movie in our own version all the time, right? So with money, people will be like, Kath, I would love to have money. Stop. Are you kidding? I, money's great. I'm so happy you have it. I love that Reese Witherspoon's got some. 
I think she's nice. I like that Michelle Obama has money. It's fine. Like, you know, but then they just seem to just never have money. Like money eludes them. There's something going on just like the dating story. It's the same story because the subconscious mind is like, how could I ever have the money? Oh my God. I mean, for me, I remember that when I hit the million dollar mark, I thought I was going to get divorced. I thought we were going to break up. I was like, he won't be able to handle it. I'm not, I don't know why. It doesn't matter. It's so ridiculous, but it was a story, right? So then I kind of hung out at a million dollars for like two years and I could feel like I was like, you know, and when you're trying to have the baby, you have these contractions and sometimes you're like, I have to push. It's like, it's just coming. And finally I was like, I have to go. I'm going, the business is going. And he was like, just go. And I was like, I'm going to outgrow you. And he's like, you know, you won't. He's like, you've already outgrown me in that department and we're fine. I'm like, we're fine. Okay. Like, I don't know. I was just like, what will happen? Like what will happen? And he's like, nothing, nothing will happen. You know? So then it was like $5 million came in. I'm like, I made five. Are we okay? He's like, you're, it's you, you have the problem. I'm okay. I'm like, okay, great. Like literally, the, the stuff I was doing on the inside, the gymnastics I was doing. And then recently I lost 17 pounds since April. Okay. And I had, I have tons of issues. You guys, we can, we can sit and have therapy another time. And I'll tell you all the fun issues I have mostly around physical intimacy. And it's so fun. Can't wait to discuss it with you, but believe me, I have all my same issues as everybody else. It just, I maybe don't have it with, with money as much, but I, so I had gained this weight and it was funny because that just was never one of my issues. Like growing up, I was always like kind of tall and five, eight. So I'm always kind of tall. So being kind of tall, man, I was always thin, right? All of a sudden, I don't know. Like I had these like extra pounds on me. And I remember watching my, my closet change from like size four, size six, size eight, size 10. And I was like, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. I just was like going along, you know, look at my cute little cat. That's pancakes. Anyway, and then a friend of mine said to me, actually, she works on my team. She's like, I have a, a comment, which I, I'm just wanting to put here. It could be, it could be helpful, maybe horrible, but take it or leave it. And I was like, go for it. And she's like, I feel like you think that because you now make millions of dollars, it's just, it's just kind of neutral, just what is. It's like my hair is highlighted. I make millions of dollars. Okay. She goes, I think you think you are unrelatable. So like you had to gain weight. She's like, it's just based on a few things that you said. And I was like, oh, that's true. I was like, that's true. Oh my God. Like I didn't want to outgrow people. So I noticed also that when I would run into like people who had known me, like family friends or friends from high school, and they'd be like, how are you? would be like, you know, life's so hard. You know how life is. It's just so lifey. And then they would be like, what's up? And I'm like, you know, it's, it's, you know, like, come on, like life, you know, you know how it is. And like, I couldn't say like, it's good. It's really good. I've worked really hard on myself. I've been in 15 years of therapy. I kind of figured it out. I'm doing really well. I kind of like my job. I have a cute cat. I have a really nice sofa too. Like I couldn't enjoy it because I thought people wouldn't be my friend anymore. So I had a whole other thing going on. It's like amazing how it's like, who moved my cheese? It would like, move. oh, it's like whack-a-mole. Now it's here, now it's here. So all of a sudden, when she said that to me, I just dropped the weight. People are like, did you go on a diet? Which one was it? Oh, is that big? I'm like, no, it's called letting it go, whether or not people like me or not. That's what it was. It was amazing. Like I was carrying around 17 extra pounds because I thought people would think I was a bitch if I happen to be thin and then I also have money. It's like, well, then you definitely can't be nice. And I wanna be nice so bad. And then I realized what makes somebody nice and relatable is who they are, okay? That's what makes you relatable. If you're nice, that's it. That's all there is to it, you know? You can be, you can be any size. And if you are a yummy person, I'm like, give it, get in here, I wanna hug you, I love you, right? It doesn't matter. So that was interesting. That was interesting. So there's all kinds of ways that we can keep ourselves apart from something. And we need to just get conscious because as soon as you're conscious, as soon as I was aware of that thing, I just dropped it. I was like, I don't agree with that. And that's true. You're right. I was holding that. So I'm not holding that anymore. People can just exit stage left. If they want to talk crap about me because of whatever is threatening to them, fine. And the truth is, by the way, you know what a gift it is to be, to trigger somebody. 
you know what a gift you're giving them when I've ever been triggered? Cause of course, any one moment of personal development you do, you realize it's about you. It's a gift. Okay. And by the time you're triggered a few too many times, you go, what is this? Why has it bothered me so much that that girl, I go to Thanksgiving dinner and she just has a boundary. Who is she to have a boundary? I'm like taking all my mom's garbage. It's like, no, she's triggering you because you wish you could set a boundary, right? Whatever it is, it's actually a gift. Even when somebody triggers you because they're a horrible person, you know why that's great? It tells you who you're not, right? I mean, all the people in this world who are filled with hate and grossness and like we've, we've seen those people. You know why that's good too? Because it makes me stronger and it makes me convicted. And then when I stand up for people who come from all diverse backgrounds, I'm like, I'm proud of this. This needs to be said. This is who I am. This is where I'm not. This is where I stand. This is who I believe in and all that stuff, you know? So all the contrast is actually a gift. So don't deny people the contrast that you might ruffle feathers because you actually show up in a room and you, you don't want to dim your light, especially for other women. Ooh, they should see people right? They should see people like you who have integrity, who are kind, who give money to charity, who enjoy your life, who also give yourself a nice massage. They should be living that way too. What's the good reason that they shouldn't?